One of the most painful experiences we can have in life is losing someone we love. And when it comes to losing a spouse, women experience it five times more than men. This, not surprisingly, has a profound impact on standard of living. Studies show that for women over 65 who have lost a spouse, their income decreases year over year. Okay, I don't want to depress you. There is hope. The Bible clearly teaches there's a special place in the heart of God for those who are widowed. Joining me to unpack this is Miriam Neff, founder of the ministry Widow Connection. Thanks so much for coming to talk about this today. This comes out of your own experience, losing your husband, Bob, after 12, 12 years ago, after 41 years of marriage. Tell me how you've learned how God sees the widow. Well, what's amazing, first of all, go to the Word of God and read the verses that say widow and you learn he loves you very much. But then when I read about widows and I've written about 11 of them, they are amazing women who found contentment in very different circumstances. Some are very poor, the widow who gave two mites. Some never remarried, Anna the prophetess. Some Bathsheba ended up marrying the man who had impregnated her as a married woman and had her husband murdered. I mean, these widows in scripture, I read their stories and I began to think, what courage. Look at what God did with them. Some aren't even named. The widow of Zarephath, the widow of her pot of oil. No one knows their name. We don't know their name, we'll know in heaven. But Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a widow. We know her. We know Ruth, we know Naomi. Some are named. Some were Jew, some were Gentile. Uh, some were, um, had stages of their life that were evil. These are all kinds of people and God says, I love you and I'm gonna take care of you. And for Miriam, it's like, I wanna be like them. I wanna be like Mary, the mother of Jesus, to have courage to just keep loving my son. Now, of course, she was unique, but still, I can desire that or I can wanna be like Ruth and just give up anything mm. for God. So you've written, you've studied these 11 women in your book, Not Alone, uh, which is a phenomenal book, by the way, kind of fictionalizing these stories from the Bible to kind of make it real. Maybe people who ha have a hard time reading the Bible or haven't read the Bible can read about these widows and that you can find this on Amazon, right? Not Alone, uh, amazon.com or on your website, widowconnection.com. But um, I'm thinking about these stories like the widow with the pot of oil. You said she's not named. You know, but there's an incredible story here where she doesn't have any food. She thinks she's going to basically die from famine. And the prophet says to her, give me the last of what you have. Like, that's just crazy. Well, you're going to die anyway, I guess, you know, give it to the prophet. But crazy, messy things happen today, too. But I look at her and first of all, the reason she was poor might have been that she might have been married to Obadiah, who was a prophet who saved a hundred other prophets and fed them himself but then he died and he owed a lot of debt. Now we don't know it was Obadiah, but we know it was a prophet. Mm. And she's left with two sons and nothing. And this debt is hers now. And the people that her husband owed money to came and I'm sure they were looking at her sons like, that kid can work. I can get money from him or I can make him a slave. And that happens today with widows in, in developing countries. Mm -hmm. And this woman, when Elijah says, okay, make me some food, you know, give me, you're going to be okay, but you have to trust me. When she had to believe that person and he said, go get to your pot, go have your neighbors give you pots and keep pouring from that pot. The neighbor might say, why give her a pot? She's poor. She'll steal it. She'll sell it. They had to trust her and her integrity. Mm. And then we know that he said, go behind closed doors with your sons and keep pouring from that pot of oil. And they ate through the whole time of famine. Literally, so this is a miracle. She had almost no oil and it kept yeah, filling pot right. after pot after pot. Right, and now think of giving the pot back to that neighbor. So you're the neighbor that loaned her the pot. Every day she's got to use that pot. She says, God did a miracle with this. So in other words, it was a way to get the word out. God loves that poor woman. You think someone's going to take her sons? You think she's going to be the destitute person alone? Watch God work. I mean, look at the cur I read those stories and I think, I want to be like that. You know, I want to be that courageous. And it, it inspires me when I'm doing something really hard and some of the things I do are hard and it's like, okay, if she could do that, I can do this. Mm, it's good to remember that. You know, I always say, um, you don't get a miracle till you need a miracle. So great stories like that don't happen till you are almost running out of food. Like, you know what I mean? That's when right. those crazy, story, awesome stories happen. 
Oh, and we had a flat tire in Kosovo in an old car. And I went to my first project. There was no one there to meet me, and I didn't take enough bottled water to the village. And I'm sleeping in a hut, and I'm thinking, Lord, this is a big mistake. It's like, no, Miriam, watch these women learn. And that was a successful project because God kept coming through, not because Miriam was so cool and did everything right the first time. I made every mistake in the book. Mm. And I think my guardian angel has t tattered wings. They're gray falling out and he's saying, <laughs> and he's God, give me a new assignment here. This is, you know, this one's a little loopy over. No, I just believe God. I watch what God did with these women. I want him to do that with me. Mm. And every story that you read in this book and in the Bible, you can extrapolate that to say, God, if he did it for her, he'll do it for me. This mm -hmm. is the kind of husband you are to the widow. The Bible says that he is a husband to them. I love this quote by you, and I want you to explain it. You said, we can be conformed by our past, restricted by our loss, or we can be transformed and changed. We can be shackled or crushed by our past or remade, remixed, and renewed. Tell me about what you've learned from all of these stories of widows in your own experience, and what does that mean? If Psalm 139 says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made to begin with, does that matter when everything has gone south? Am I not still fearfully and wonderfully made up for whatever that is ahead? And I've said many times, don't let your tragedy define you, let it equip you. Learn from those things. When you're weak, that's when God steps up and says, hey, it's my shoulders you're on, not yours. And when you're in that position where you think, did I make a mistake here? And that's when God loves to say, it's not about how strong you are or how big or how smart or how much you know. If Miriam Neff can train hundreds of widows in poor countries with a saleable skill where they can support their kids and hold their shoulders back, is Miriam doing that? No, God is doing that. Every person that's watching us and listening, God has something unique for them not from Psalm 139, like we said before, unique for them. Not that you're going to say, well, do what I'm doing. Who can do the kinds of things you do? Nobody can. You're uniquely gifted for that. And I look in the mirror and say, Miriam, it's okay for you to recognize it's God's gift. You didn't do anything for this. But I hope women read the stories. And by the way, there's study questions. I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do a little bit of thinking and talking with your girlfriends and say, why do we learn from this? Like the widow and the unjust judge, to be persistent when things aren't fair, good lesson. I love this because not very many people are talking specifically about widowhood and yet most people that get married are gonna face that pretty much, right? It's pretty rare that you both go at the same time. So thank you for just focusing on this and bringing encouragement to people in this really tough and new season in their lives. Thanks. Glad you let me share that and women are gonna love these women. They're going to want to be like them too. Well, there's so much more to unpack here. Make sure if you want to get a copy of this book, Not Alone with Miriam Neff, you go to Amazon.com. And also, I hope that you're encouraged today. Whatever season you're in, you know, if you feel like you're alone, if you feel like you're forgotten, if you feel like no one understands, let me tell you, God gets it. He understands and he loves to walk through people in tough times. That's when we cry out to him the most. In a sense, sometimes we ignore him until we need him like that, which is unfortunately true of human nature. If you are in that season and you just want someone to encourage you and pray with you, I just want to encourage you to call our prayer lines. That's what we're here for. And uh, we'd love to pray with you in this season of your life. That number, 1-866-273-4444. We'll be right back.